There we go. What's up, crypto legends? Welcome to a live stream today where we're going to discuss the price of Bitcoin and also take a look at some cryptocurrencies on the chart. I have here Devolt, who is an absolute master in technical analysis. How are you doing, Devolt, today? Thanks, Andy, for having me here on a lazy Sunday. And um, yes. myself and Andy decided let's spoil our communities, do a lazy Sunday update, see where, well, possible scenarios. And um, thanks for having me, Andy. You know, nice to spend some time with the community here on a lazy Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. I mean, today was a very, very chill day for me as well. And I just thought, you know, hey, let's just jump into a live stream, analyze the situation. You know, my voice, I've been lying on the sofa. I've been chilling, you know, on the sunshine and thought, you know, hey, let's just get a live stream going on and talk about the, you know, Bitcoin price together. So then, mm -hmm. you know, the people can know, you know, the community can actually see you know, my perspective, they can see your perspective and what we are looking for here for the start of Monday to get into some epic trades. I'm actually in a really nice long trade that we got in a few days ago. I was expecting this bounce to the upside. We can talk about that in just a few minutes. But overall, you're good. I want to know your opinion on the Bitcoin charts, uh, Devolt. Uh, you know, let's go straight into the meat and potatoes. Then we go through the comment section. I can see Aditya here one of my moderators and a lot of people joining in. Let me just quickly say hello. We've got Mr. Duke. We've got Alf. We've got Aditya, Daniel, maybe Bandite, uh, Davey, Relief. How are you doing? Jagana, Sandra, Nextcar. How are you guys doing? Let's go through the charts. And I'm going to leave it to Devolt to go through that pure technical analysis, higher time frame, lower time frame. What is going on, <laughs> Devolt? Where are those trading opportunities? We are here to make money. Yes, we are, Andy, and it's always a game of probability. So let me add this to the stage. And, you know, uh, Andy, quickly, before we jumped onto the live stream, I told you that I'm expecting some sort of a fake out, okay? Because I see everyone, and when everyone is watching a pattern, you know, the market makers are going to make it difficult. Everyone is watching this triangle, Okay. And the one thing I thought about last night while I was laying in bed is to say that there are, you know, from the research and the podcast that I've been listening to, Andy, there are so many new people entering the trading space. And I think the market makers have their game cut out for them because if there are more people trading the same patterns, trading the same strategies, they're going to start making it more difficult. Okay, mm. so a simple triangle like this is most probably not going to be a simple triangle anymore. Oh. You're most probably going to see fake outs to the upside, fake outs to the downside, and then you're going to see a true move either to the upside or a continuation to the downside, mm. confusing everyone that's starting to learn pattern trading, the new retail traders coming in. So I have prepared a couple of Elliott Wave bearish scenarios where we can expect a couple of fake outs to the up and to the downside. And I would like to take you guys through that today. Nice. So, I want to see that. <laughs> Without further ado, I think, Andy, the trade that you are most likely in is this one over here. Okay. And you've most probably caught this little triple, you know, bottom over here um, with that potential bump and run scenario where you have the two touches, you have the bump to the downside, and you broke out. Beautiful retest. I think that was also a long, nice long entry year where you had a value area inside here. And I'm mm -hmm. in a slightly higher time frame over here where we had lots of choppiness here to the downside. And eventually mm -hmm. we got the move back up. So yeah. I also entered the long over here, not this mm -hmm. one. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually I, got stopped out. Uh, once on that one because we did create a bit of choppiness on the lower time frames 15 minute five minute time frame so it was you know you're very very choppy and i yes. was you know, but i was saying to the community this is the moment you know if it, it might chop another again it might form a double a triple a quadruple bottom right there and we want to try and yes. catch that last wick recovery um so i did get stopped out once here at a loss minor loss but overall made you know almost five times my my stop loss so you know this is the whole beauty of it understanding you know the risk management when to enter you know it doesn't matter getting stopped out once i got stopped out you know the other day trying to long this you know trade yeah you know, with very good risk management and um yeah overall the the trade setup has played out very very nicely you know claiming those highs uh at you know sixty nine thousand 
four hundred dollar range, right? The highs that we yes. created on the uh, what day was it? The fourth, the fifth of no, the fourth of of April. Anyway, um, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll leave you to it, and then I'll, I'll go through my charts as well, explain a few scenarios, but. Let's go forward. Yeah, and I think, Andy, mm. such a beautiful trade because, you know, we spoke about this value area range over here. And I kind of saw this level as the last line in the sand from a support perspective, yeah. or yeah. we can go down to much lower levels. Mm. And um, I think during one of your YouTube updates, you also spoke about we need to hold this level. We need to hold this level. And then we started, yeah. you know, we dipped in. I entered. And I got stopped out with this little week as well. Okay. Oh, yeah. But then when I saw the recovery back up, not managing to close the body of the candle inside mm. of this range, I was like, hang on, this looks like it wants to go up. Okay. Yeah. So beautiful trade over here, nonetheless. Okay. But I think before we dive in here to the smaller time frames, let me go and go back onto the four hour over here. Let's just discuss a couple of bearish Elliott wave scenarios that could play out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> everyone is obviously watching this triangle over here and I can even mm -hmm. for the sake of this, take these trend lines out. Okay. Just clean it up a little bit. And I have here on the side, I have three scenarios that I'm currently watching and I feel the one of them has a higher probability. We'll just have to observe price reaction when we do hit those levels. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let me go through number two and three because I think they have higher probability of playing out and then the lowest probability one I'll tackle through last. Okay. Number right. two, what I am looking at, and I know it looks a bit messy when I, when I switch it on, but I want to explain it step by step so I can perhaps mm -hmm. just switch off the FIBS here. Okay. This is kind of the scenario that I'm watching over here is to say mm -hmm. that we have a WXY structure, okay, which is also an... A, B, C to the upside, where you have the fake out, where you grab the liquidity above the highs, okay, mm -hmm. only to get a move down to go and complete a five wave C, five C wave structure here to the downside. Mm -hmm. And more or less measuring out this move is to say that if I take a FIB to measure the B wave, you'll see that from A yeah. to B is between the 1.23s and the 1.23. Um, six one three eight two one point two three six. So anywhere in this area, I yeah. would personally like it to grab this top line because then you're grabbing that nice liquidity above this high mm -hmm. as well. Okay, where we mm -hmm. could see that fake out making people extremely bullish here to the upside, and I already see bearish CVD locally mm -hmm. starting to build up here. So there's a prob high probability that this could play out where we go up. And we come back down. So you have a fake out to the upside and you have a fake out to the downside. But this move to me is still bullish because even when you're finished with the C wave, you are now going to start building impulses back to the upside, which is then continuing the bullish structure and potentially going to claim $80,000, $90,000 or even $100,000. We'll just have mm. to observe the price reaction when we get there. The other trend-based FIB is then purely speculating that if the B wave had to end here, yeah, where can the C wave end? And that is basically A, B, C. And you can see here by the 1.618, which is a common C wave target, is where you fall down, you grab the liquidity below A, creating mm. that fake out, and then, continue, then for the true breakout to happen to the upside. Mm. Okay. So this is one scenario that I'm watching, but there's also another one I think that you've spoken about as well. Okay, so switch this off and we go to scenario number three. Okay, this is kind of the scenario. It's a little bit of a bigger fake out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think, Andy, this is one that you've spoken about as well. Me and you yeah. actually is to say that this B wave here to the upside is not finished yet. And we can mm. have a flat expanding B wave here to the upside where you have an A massive B here to $78,000, $77,000, making people even more bullish, extremely yeah. bullish. We're going to $100,000 where you have a larger A, B, and then this C wave to the downside is a five, five impulsive wave to the downside. One, two, three, four, five, where you then mm. tap the one point 
0.618, making people extremely bearish, grabbing all of the liquidity below here because there's massive liquidity here. So mm. I like the scenario more mm. because of how bullish and how bearish it's going to make people when this plays out. Okay. I don't know what you, what you think about this scenario, Andy. Absolutely. I do see this as one of the scenarios playing out. Um, you know, the the thing about, as, as traders, Devolt, um, you know, we have to be ready for any of these scenarios. So no doubt that if we do break all-time high, depending on what kind of reactions we do have at those, you know, Fibonacci levels, and yes. I always like to talk about the double, triple tops, right? When the price is getting choppy, we're forming local bearish CVD divergence. You know, we're getting a little bit of those signs of data that the price could reverse. No doubt that, you know, this area above all time high is just going to be a, a level to consider entering a short position. Because, I mean, also what I think now, Dewalt, is that we we have a lot of selling pressure above all time high you know everybody's in profit when we're hitting all time high mm -hmm. and since you know for the last few weeks every time we've hit all time high we we haven't had a major large move right we haven't pumped 10 15000 dollars after breaking all time high going to price discovery every yes. time that we're hitting all time high it's kind of getting several thousand dollars of a of a big major pullback of selling pressure as a, yeah. you know, not, not only everybody's in profits, you know, big money is in profits, institutions are in profits. So, and when they sell, you can, you can see a big movement down of several thousand dollars, right. In a matter of a few hours. So, you know, this scenario does make a lot of sense uh, that, you know, we could be seeing a lot, a big, big, larger move down if we do break all time high in that ABC flat. So, uh, you know, I, I totally agree on this scenario. I will be ready to look for short positions but obviously being very patient as well as yes. you will be fighting the trend right um this is something interesting that i've learned during the last few years and not over you know many many years even you know the last you know one to two years is when we're trying to tr find a, a top or a bottom we need to always flip to the other side and say look we are fighting the trend right and mm. then we need to be very patient to see that exhaustion, to see that sign of weakness with those double, triple, you know, quadruple tops or, or bottoms uh, and and go with the trend as well. Because uh, me with the Legends community, I, I, I like to, you know, say to them, look, this is a strong higher time frame resistance that I'm, I'm possibly looking for a short here. However, I will be looking for scalp longs, you know, going yes. with the trend. I, I'm also wanting to go with the trend understanding that hey you know those highs that have been created an hour ago you know they're very likely going to be tested again to see if we're going to break out or double top or triple top so we need to always have that perspective as a trader right you know looking for shorts but also looking for longs right at the same time super important uh, just a little tip that i wanted to say there devolt <laughs> definitely andy and i think you know it's also this is going to be you know even taking the let's say this structure just for argument's sake let's say this structure is going to play out this is yeah. going to make a lot of people very bullish when we break through here and we oh, find yeah. strength above this level and we don't sfp this is going to look mm. extremely bullish mm. so i know a lot of people will then ask me but how are you going to know if price is becoming weak over here and i suppose for me andy the best example that i can use is when we were over here okay mm -hmm. I just want to show everyone if I go into CVD right here on the five minute time frame. Mm. And where was that price action? It was over yeah. Okay, yeah. See this price action over here? Yeah. Oh yeah. I just want to mm. translate that back into the price. It's when we made this high over here. So I'm on the five minute year. I'm on the four hour year. So it's a bit difficult, but nonetheless, it was this price action. So if we had to start hitting these levels, these FIP levels. So I will definitely have these FIP levels marked out on my chart. And when we start hitting them and I start seeing things like this, okay, where you, 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 you claim to, well, you fail to claim the level, okay? You come back to the 618 and the 786 and you reject. And then mm -hmm. look what happened over here when we came back up. So a FIP taken from the high to the low 
at the 618, look what happened to CVD. So I will be looking at local CVD to see if we find or build up bearish CVD, not looking at the larger time frames. I like the five mm. minute because I feel that yeah. local CVD also always have or paint the direction right. better than like a 15 minute or a one hour CVD. So if yeah. I had to see something like this, it will give me confidence to start looking for shorts. But if I don't see any bearish CVD mm. and it just keeps on building up a bullish CVD for momentum to the yeah. upside, I will just keep some of that position open, expecting us to go and claim higher levels. Yeah, I mean, uh, remaining patient and, and waiting to see what the price action does at those levels is, is going to be absolute key. But this is like always, right? Always be remaining patient, look for the exhaustion, look for bearish CVD, look for the reaction, double, triple tops, right? And all of this... Uh, you know, price action is, is going to be absolutely key to to then jump into the short, possibly, right? Uh, because if not, we, we, we're still looking for longs on, on, on the lower time frame, one minute, three minute. You know, uh, I, I use volume strategy. You very much know about volume strategy where, you yes. know, you have those nice volume spikes to the upside. You retrace, you break with high volume, and then you bounce to that high volume peak. Um, so I think, you know, when you wait, when you, re when you're remaining patient to see if a level is going to get a reaction, just get into those small little scalp longs as you do, you know, start getting the exhaustion because yeah, exactly. Anyway. And, and I think you speak about it so often, Andy, where you say that even if you are feeling bearish, okay, and the trend yeah. is down, you can still play longs. And even when you bullish, you can still play shorts to the mm. little scalp shorts to the downside. So um, I can be a bull and a bear within mm. four hours, I can be a bull and a yeah. bear. And I've made profits both on a long and a short because I've been observing price reaction as we mm. hit specific levels. And I yeah. think I don't trade Elliott waves and I, and you know, and I tell my community this as well. It's just interesting to see where, well, it's interesting to yeah, see the, what the price scenarios. could potentially do scenarios. And then when yeah, we do yeah. hit those levels, I want to see how we react at those levels. And I yeah, think that's yeah. why I do Elliott wave targets more. So mm. I, I'm trying to work out where's the targets where we could see those yeah. little fake outs and the turnaround in the price. And then, yeah. you know, look at CVD, have a mm. little line there. Do we fail to break through or are we accepting the level as support and for continuation to the upside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I remember you a few days ago uh, in the Legends Trading community. I mean, I want to share the chart because you, you yeah. actually gave the target zone of this corrective move that happened in basically a, f a few days ago. This was uh, Wednesday. Yeah, about Thursday. Thursday from, from this week. And uh, shout out to you, by the way, because I did watch your update. <laughs> um, we, you know, we are here, you know, it's always good <laughs> if you if you are here, you know, me, you, we know it's good to know your opinion, different opinions from, you know, people that are actually trading, right? People that are actually yes. looking at the analysis and trading. And I remember you talking about um, this movement to, to, you know, basically the movement right over here. This is the, I mean, that triple bottom that you absolutely nailed. And I actually missed out on this long. I did get stopped out once and, you know, and basically it didn't, I was waiting for the long position here. However, mm. um, I remember you talking about the, this wave to the upside, this corrective wave and the extension, which is the 1.618 from this pivot low, pivot high to the pivot low right there. Just absolute getting, perfection. Yeah. <laughs> getting tapped to the perfection. And you were talking about this when we were trading here. <laughs> so, you know, this is a, actually a really, really, you know, kind of, you kind of, um, almost a crystal ball right but this is this is when we have it's so many, technical it is so yeah, technical yeah based on, <clears throat> on on the on the recoveries you know if you do form a wave up here you know breaking the lower highs from this price action you're already breaking a little bit of this local structure and you're already coming with the plan that you know this might be either a one two three or an abc it doesn't matter but you need yeah. to form that third wave to potentially hit the 1.618 which, you know, almost hits to the dollar. And you were talking about this, you know, uh, days in advance, you know, just because obviously we talk about several scenarios, right? We have different scenarios to the upside, to the downside. 
but this is the moment you know where where you want to take those you know you want to take those trading plans and 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 understand the projected move i think we were hitting a naked point of control right there if i'm not mistaken as well we were uh, i think there was a daily level i mean i've, I've deleted all of this on the chart right now obviously but um, yeah. Uh, I think it was basically testing these lows. I think there was a daily level, um, but I know this was actually a pretty good level to long as well as you were hitting the 618 Fibonacci right there and recovering yes. very nicely with an SFP from the local lows from the what, from Wednesday. And um, you know, I did not long. I, the one that I longed is here, and I'm still yes. in that long position, taking most of the profits here as we've hit this high, which did create a little local swing value pattern and choppiness. So I thought, you know, I'm happy. You know, what if this does double top? Uh, you know, I'm happy to take some profits here. But anyway, just to make the people understand that, you know, in the Legends community, you always welcome Legends, you know, to, to join there because we do updates every single day. And we trying to look for the possible projections on the chart and looking for the trading setups with very good risk management, right? You know, I no, neither you or me, we 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 know exactly what's going to happen. Nobody knows, but we really try and do our best to look for the possible projections. And you know, shout out to you, Devolt, because this one was absolutely fascinating. You know, the triple bottom right there, looking for the long, and actually looking for this recovery to hit the one point six one eight, which was a absolutely fantastic prediction on your side there. Thank you. I think we all have our good weeks and we also have our bad weeks. And I think, you know, as traders, that's why you build that community to rely on each other is to say that when I have a bad week, I can rely more on Andy's analysis. And when he, Andy has yeah. a, a bad week, you can look more at my analysis and yeah. still keep, you know, but it's still risk management that keeps you in the game and successful. And I mm. think you know, last week there was just so many trades that I hit the nail to mm -hmm. perfection. I was even if surprised with myself. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe this. In the zone. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is the moment. Yes. You're not, yeah. As a trader, you, you you get into the zone many times. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes you, you're in the zone for, for two, three weeks, right? And you feel so powerful and you feel like invincible that you're, you know, you're the, you know, you're the TA wizard, right? Yes. But then yes. the market, humbles you the market comes yeah. back and humbles you and just tells you this is a game of probabilities and you're not the ta master you're not the trader master you just you know having good risk management you need to always have your risk management into place but yeah it's pretty fascinating sometimes you do get into the zone and you know this happens yeah. to me you know at least once a month where i'm a a, a very good solid week or almost two weeks where I'm really in the zone and I'm nailing many, many trades, you know, consistently. But then obviously you get, you know, one or two stop losses, you know, uh, that, that, that that's when the market humbles you, right? And he's like, hey, calm down there. You're not the market wizard. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And you get into a small, a small little loss. And that's, you know, that's the risk management. You know, always you need, to, you need to pay off the market, you know, at some point always. And we need to always manage that risk right just pay yeah. a little bit to the market don't get into that death spiral of a massive swing you know long or short where you're in, in underwater in the negative and hoping that the market is going to reverse at some point because this is you know basically where i got burnt and everybody gets burnt like this right when they're holding a lot a losing position yes like, and, adding it, and adding to it and adding to it and making it, it bigger yeah, yeah. You know, we, we, I think most of us have been there, especially, you know, people like you and me that are, you know, consistent and profitable. Uh, you know, we've always been, you know, we've been in that scenario and you, you learn from that scenario. You know, I, I, I say at every single live stream, almost every single live stream, do not trade like this because, um, you know, you, you're finally going to burn your account or, or at least half of your account. Right. Anyway. Definitely. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, Andy, it's so important what you're saying is that, you know, I felt like I was in the zone, yes, uh, last week where I just got every single analysis spot on or most of them spot on. 
Um, but I know from experience that the market can turn against you so quickly where your analysis mm. feels like, what was I even smoking by telling people that this is going yeah. to play out? But yeah, then it yeah. is risk management that protects you. And, you know, and you stay humble and you say, guys, mm. and, and I think, Andy, I think one thing that myself and you do very well is that we always go through both bullish and bearish scenarios. And we have a plan for both because mm. I can't just sit here and tell my community, we're going up to $100,000. Buy, 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 buy. Yeah. And then people liquidate their accounts. And I was like, yeah, I did see the berry scenario, but I, I was feeling bullish. No. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't trade on feeling. You have to trade on what the technicals are telling you. 100%. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, let's crack on. I mean, I'm going to go quickly yes. through the comment section. Just um, say hello. I can see Philip here. Hello, Philip. How are you doing? Any explanation that does not take much risk? Uh, BTC will dump. I'll bet, says William. It will dump and it will pump, right? Um, what yeah. about SPX sell-off? SPX sell-off? There's been an SPX sell-off. Um, that's the S&P 500. Did we have a sell-off on Friday, Devolt? I was actually not. I haven't taken that at uh, the S&P 500, to be honest. I mm, um, also haven't looked at the stocks yet, yeah. Yeah. Frank Geds, how are you doing? Marcin, Crypto King, Anup, hello guys. All good, all good. I think we can continue um, with um, Bitcoin analysis. I mean, shall we talk about... you gone through the higher time frames, Devolt. A little bit. Yeah, there's possible. one more scenario which I think yeah. has the lowest pro. So I'll just briefly tackle on that and then we can perhaps analyze possible trading setups to look out for for the yeah. next coming day, day or hours. Yeah. And um, so just quickly, Andy, what I wanted to highlight is scenario number one. And this is mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a more complex scenario where you basically have an A, B, C, D, E, and then you have a final wave here, Y wave to the downside. So just to paint this picture, and I think a lot of people like to see these little lines. I like to take them out because they clutter my chart, but a lot of people like to see that. Mm -hmm. and let me just switch these ones on as well. Okay. We, we're basically staying inside. We're going to keep on ranging inside of the triangle. We're going to form a final E wave, which is also a W, X, Y. Then we'll have a small little fake out here. Okay. Small mm -hmm. little fake out. A bigger fake out to the, to the downside, grabbing the liquidity below this low over here for the yep. continuation to the upside. So mm -hmm. for now this probability can definitely play out. But from an Elliott wave scenario, I like to have like three or four possible Elliott wave scenarios that could potentially play out is to say that this little wave that we are forming here to the upside can definitely, and I have this line as an SFP line, so possible yeah. trading setup over here is that I am looking okay, at this level as a possible SFP level right over here, okay? And then mm -hmm. obviously another one over here. Two SFP yeah. levels. I want to see how price reacts when we get to these levels because then we can make a deeper correction to the downside or even come and claim the liquidity above these highs over here. So even from a smaller time frame perspective, I'm looking at the reaction as we hit each level and even the top of this channel. Do we find mm -hmm. strength or does it look weak where you have a week to the upside you have a closing body of the candle below you see some maybe bearish local cvd kicking in yeah. only to reject here from this um local high over here mm. yeah i mean there is um, a daily naked point of control that we almost tapped with um the pump that we've had during the last 24 hours hitting that 69,700 range you know from the 2nd if I'm, of april if i'm not mistaken where you have that sfp uh, level at $70,000 yeah that consolidation that we do have below yeah we do have um, a high volume node yeah, yeah. exactly right over it's there really that has hasn't been tapped so well, it's been tapped on binance i'm not sure oh, about binance. binance right so let's look yeah. at this quick so i can see yeah just tapped today well it was tapped yeah today this morning three o'clock in mm. the morning it was tapped and look at the rejection that we got to the downside yeah. it actually okay. formed a local swing value a local double top right local double yes. top right there on the lower time frames as we were tapping that level so i mean that would have been a a good short trade. If I would have been on front of the computer, I would have 
I would have got, got into that short. Definitely. Sure. definitely. Um, we do have a naked one over here that looks juicy, though. <laughs> from yesterday's price action, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So, do, 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 trainings, I mean, I am... I, I feel a bit still a bit bullish, but no doubt that the price is getting some weird reactions here. I mean, no doubt. I think we could even form another high right now from 69,800 range, test the highs one more time and then get a pretty decent pullback. Uh, price yes. action is getting choppy. It is getting choppy. It's just, um, hmm. And like you mentioned, Andy, like what happened over here, triple bottom, you're at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Triple bottom, yeah, where exactly. you caught the long. So, yeah. you know, beautiful long year, beautiful long year. Yeah. Will, you know, this will be for me one an more ultimate test. short. One mm, more test. One. So, one, two, I would like to see grab of liquidity, yeah. getting weakness, acceptance yeah. back below the level. And I would definitely target this consolidation area over yeah. here yeah. for a TP. Where you could, yeah. you know, take, and I think, you know, you take your FIP from the, um, wherever that top is going to be, round about mm. here, you can see the consolidation, nice profit area zone over here. And yeah. then also a little bit down, we have a daily, untapped daily level that we can go and potentially tap if we get more momentum down here, you know, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps another SFB, triple bottom, double bottom for then continuation back to the upside. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, uh, it's a, it's a good plan. It's a good plan uh, to hit that 70,000. And I mean, it's a nice round psychological number. If we do attempt to hit $70,000, right, on the test of the highs of, you know, basically the last 24 hours. And um, all also, we are... Look at this. Look at this, Andy. This, wow, now, yeah. this, this is what I looked at before we jumped on the stream is to say that, wow, wow. look at yellow just flying up here. Okay, we're forming a little bit of a triangle. So even between this pivot, where we yeah. are right now, and this pivot, so there's, there's a chance that if we had to come back up here, grab these highs for that, you know, acceptance back below the level um, for a nice little short entry to the downside. Mm -mm. There is massive, massive bearish CVD divergence actually on Bybit. Absolutely crazy. A lot of people longing. Yes. At this level. Um, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think <laughs> the best scenario that I do see here, to be honest, is actually testing that high. I would set some alerts at that 69,700, 800 range and set your alarms. And yeah. I think another level that I'll watch here as well is definitely claiming these lows, getting acceptance back below, and even mm. this one over here. I would keep an eye on this one as well. You, you know, it could be one of those large weeks where you get acceptance back below. Mm. It's mm. going to be a little bit of a higher stop loss, but I, I do think that the risk to reward will make up for it because I do see this as a profit-taking area, considering mm. that you can make almost twice or three times your stop loss. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, if you do take a look at the price action that we've, you know, since the 2nd of April, the second third of april which is basically this. the waves that we've been moving to the upside you know it's kind of already in a five wave diagonal structure kind of you know momentum that we can see how you know yeah from that low is one two three four five um mm, i see what you see yeah uh, um kind of one two three yeah. four five yeah and yeah Mm. Yeah, yeah, I see I think, what you see. I just ah, this this is yeah, it it's just overlapping. Grinds my yeah. skin a little bit. Yeah, it's overlapping <laughs> quite a lot. But to, 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 yeah, but I mean, nonetheless, I mean, it could mm. be. So let's say it is valid, Andy. To your point, that this is a one, two, three, four, and let's say it is valid. Okay, and mm. this is now five. It does look like if this is a fifth wave, some it's, downwards momentum would be in order. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. No, no, no. So perhaps an A, B, C to the downside, you know, mm. SF being from the daily level, or we could come down a little bit further to this um, 1.618 ratio down here. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. I do see some local weakness, Andy. So I think for, you know, for the people in the community looking for a nice little scalp <clears throat> or a day trade setup, I would definitely be keeping an eye on the price action over here. 
Okay, mm-hmm. keep an eye on this price action. I do see some local berry CVD. We are grabbing some liquidity above these highs. It does look like price is slowing down. And some retail traders will say, well, this is a nice little bull flag and we're just going to go up from here. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't trust these patterns. I would like to see a grab of the liquidity and getting acceptance back below. Okay, that would be oh. a nice little ticket for me. Um to come and at least claim this 0.618 level over here in conf- confluence with this um, consolidation area. and But it, it looks weak. Uh, I mean, also looking at volume, and Andy, looking at the volume down here, it's just falling down. The volume is actually yeah. just falling down. So it's looking for a bigger move to the upside or to the downside. Mm. And from a bullish perspective, I mean, I just have to highlight it, guys, that if we find acceptance back above the highs with high green volume coming in and i would say at least a 15 minute to an hour body candle close above here okay the body of the candle not the week we could be going up to higher levels and then i will looking at this daily level over here yeah yeah okay so i just want to highlight that if we find strength you know it's it's yeah uh, yeah D- d- I mean, don't. <laughs> this is you know what I was mentioning with the with the community as well. You know, we, we're trying to detect that top, but as we try to detect the top, we we're going up, right? We're just going up and up. So we need a you know if we do get a pretty yeah. nice breakout above yesterday's highs, and we do retrace, you know, it, it's no doubt that we we can look for a scalp long. Still, we can still look for a scalp long there. Um, and just wait for the exhaustion because when the price gets exhausted you hit, you do double triple quadruple tops right you get those wicks yeah. always testing the highs and if you do get a move up now going to 70,000 70,100 and you get a pretty decent pullback without testing that high on the lower time frame such as the 1 minute 3 minute you know that there's an extreme high probability that that corrective move is going to get a bounce and it's going to test the high again at least once, right? Till it double tops or till it triple tops, right? Just like what happened yesterday, basically at this level of 69,750. You know, you can see that that wick to the upside, it did create a local, uh, it did create a swing failure pattern from the highs of the 5th of, of April. It did get a pullback, but mm. overall the price did you know, go back up and test the highs. So, you know, I think, you know, if we do get the breakout above the highs for, of the last 24 hours, <clears throat> you know, in that small little pullback, I would be interested in looking for a scalp long to test the highs, no doubt, still. Yeah. Um, so get the breakout, retrace quickly on low time frames. I would be looking for those, you know, for that support level. Uh, VWAP being one of them. You know, the highs of yesterday and today, you know, also being a, a, a resistance support flip, um, you know, you name it, right? Adding that confluence to see, if, you know, where the price could get a, a pretty nice bounce. I'd be yes. also looking at volume strategy, possibly, because that move up from, I'm not sure if it was late last night, but the the, the highest volume move up, you know, oh, yeah, one. that one. Yeah. Seven, eight, bring eight, out, one o'clock. Yeah. Mm, if you break out nicely with volume in the next coming hours, I would be looking at that peak high from that candlestick, you know, between the wick and the body candle close to put possibly hold. Yeah, to possibly hold for a quick bounce, at least to try, have an attempt in testing the high of the breakout. Yeah, basically, the, yeah, this kind, yeah, that kind of move. Uh, it's a very, very tradable. They happen all the time. They have yeah. extreme high probability. And it's a kind of a quick in and out. Uh, the, the, the thing is about your stop loss here, um, you know, where to put your stop loss. And yeah, you would consider putting it beneath the last higher lows. Yeah, somewhere around that area, I think is acceptable. But the thing about these scalping longs, the risk to reward is not usually that huge. Right. It's, yeah. 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 But they're high probability, that is for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah, and what I've also found is when I do play a volume strategy, as soon as we get the move out of this area, I will always already start moving my stop loss up because I'm mm -hmm. not expecting price to come back down because yeah. th that's how I – you're right, Andy. The, the risk to reward is usually like a 1 to 1 or 1.5. Mm -hmm. It's not very yeah. high. But what I do like about them is as soon as you get the breakout, I start moving my stop loss up. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and just to try and manage risk, yeah. And obviously, by moving your stop loss, you do increase the yeah. probabilities of yourself being stopped out. But um, I generally just don't like playing a one-to-one -one ratio. My my minimum entry requirement is usually a two risk to reward um, a, yeah. a ratio. So, yeah, it's it's a it's a small little scale. Perhaps low leverage, low capital. Mm. You know, if you get if you do get stopped out, it's a small little knock on the chin. You're willing to take yeah. the knock, yeah. um, definitely. All right. Um, so scenario, okay. scenarios, scenarios. Uh, I'm going to, if you want, I can jump on the chart. You can read yes. a bit of a comment section, see if there is any altcoins on demand. And, you know, I'll do a bit, a bit of Bitcoin. If you do see any interesting altcoins, Dewalt, then, you know, you yes. can potentially take a look at one of them and do a bit of TA. I'll jump onto the chart on Bitcoin. And um, remember, BTC is the future asset. All countries will buy it. That is actually true. That is true. There's no, there's no lie, lie about that comment. So, uh, yeah, it is definitely. It's already happening. You would arguably discuss. You know, something that I wanted to point out here. Let me just share the chart, the screen right away, and uh, talk about this right over here. You can see this, right, Devolt? Yes, I can. This is the Kingdom of Bhutan, which is apparently a country in South Asia. That's mining capacity has 6x ahead of the Bitcoin halving to 600 megawatts. So, you know, nation state FOMO is setting in. A lot of countries, you know, are, you know, no doubt understanding Bitcoin, understanding that, you know, the global, you know, that the, the country's currencies are in a right state. You know, there's super inflation, you know, hyperinflation on many other countries during the last few years. And uh, understanding that Bitcoin is the real solid, you know, asset money that you would arguably discuss. And, you know, you can see these countries being very bullish on them. And, um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, one, one of the countries that is actually, uh, you know, 6x ahead of the Bitcoin halving to 600 megawatts on their, you know, basically their mining capacity. And the halving is just 13 days away. So, there is going to be a massive supply shock in the next coming months. Overall, we know this, guys. Bitcoin is bullish for the long term. Short term, we could get that volatility. We could drop beneath $60,000. Um, I want to talk about some major levels here, like, you know, Devolt. We, you know, everybody's taking a look at this symmetrical triangle. If I'm, uh, you know, if I, I, I'm sure that they are. I've actually seen it on Twitter as well you know i like to take a look at twitter you know with my morning coffee to take a look at some news and, and stuff that's going on but i have seen a few of these symmetrical triangles which is obviously you know you can see it on the chart no doubt you're seeing the lower highs and the higher lows so the the thing is what if this symmetrical triangle ha, you know is is going to extend a little bit more i mean and it, and it should not extend much more you're almost basically at 70 percent of of the pattern you could arguably discuss mm. and it's ready it's ready for the breakout or the fake out a lot of resistance it is very hard at this point because we do have local resistance here um at, you know got that naked point of control you got a massive consolidation that we had here from the 25th of march till the 2nd of april um, leaving, you know, valley area low right there where we are getting the resistance basically right there. We have the uh, point of control of the zone, which is very close to that naked point of control from the price action of the 1st of April. It's just a lot of resistance. No, you know, no doubt that this area, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to look for the shorts. If we test those highs one more time and we reject, you know, I'm jumping into a short position. Uh, that is, that is for sure. Uh, but what if we do get the breakout? I mean, if we do break out solidly from this $70,000 area, 
it, we, we still got a lot of resistance above us, to be honest. We still, you know, we got the 7, 8 Fibonacci from the highs to the lows, which is sitting at 70,200. We got the lower high resistance from the trend line, uh, you know, which is if we were to hit it in between today and tomorrow, it's sitting around about the 70,600 to 700. Uh, you know, that is if we do move there in between today and tomorrow. And there's just a lot of resistance right there. We just It's going to be a bit, a bit complex to find out, you know, where the price is going to reverse. I think the best deal here is just looking for those double, you know, double, triple tops <laughs> to, to jump into that position. Uh, but, I, you know, I managed to successfully got in, get into a short position here and successfully get into a long position here. I am still in that long position here on Bybit, you know, exactly on that triple bottom already taken over $2,000 worth of profit. You know, I think this, you know, this, this trade is basically done. Will we go at higher levels? I'm really not interested. I'm, I'm interested in, in getting into another trading setup here. And I think the next one could be in between today and tomorrow, which is this one that we are discussing right now. Um, Devolt is possibly testing above yesterday's high is trying to attempt to hit $70,000 yeah. and possibly creating that, you know, double, triple top. Legends, you have an incredible deal down below on Bybit. You know, Bybit is the number one most trusted crypto exchange out there thanks to their track record and their transparency. For me, it's the number one. I totally trust them. I know I will have no issue trading with them. And for me, you know, it's, you know, I cannot discuss this with you. You know, Bybit for me is number one. You got the greatest deals down below in the description. If you cannot trade on Bybit, of course, a great alternative is Mexi. I know me and Devault, you know, Devault also, you know, trades on Mexi, such as myself, you know, for scalping. Um, that you are going to go KYC in the next coming months. If I'm not mistaken, in June, we are looking for another no KYC trusted platform because I think it is definitely worth, you know, having a no KYC platform, obviously, just to sign up with an email and, and, and a password, basically. But for the moment, you still got a few months for no KYC on Mexi. Check out the bonuses down below, legends. Um, right. Bitcoin, Bitcoin. I think no doubt that this symmetrical triangle could have one more leg to the downside. We could be looking for a fake out in this area. I am interested in short positions. You know, I am interested in getting into shorts with good risk management. Of course, I am aware of the price just shooting up here and getting above $72,000. One of the main reasons as well is this bump and run pattern that we have been talking about here just a few days ago. And the bump and run pattern target is actually hitting the highs from the start of the, you know, the lead in phase, right? Where you have those lower highs right over here. And it's actually taking those highs out, which is sitting around about $71,800. That is where we do have a bunch of liquidity. We do have a bunch of liquidity sitting at the $72,000 range. So, um, yeah, I mean, we need to react as traders, you know, it's a pretty random me saying, you know, I'm bearish, but I know we can go to 72 K is like, you know, this dude, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's, he's, he's bullish, but he's bearish, you know, somebody, somebody put him down. <laughs> yeah. But we just need to react as traders at certain levels, right? It's as simple as that. You know, sometimes we need to talk about the levels and, you know, this level is, no doubt a resistance zone. We could be just hitting that seven, eight Fibonacci from pivot high, pivot low, and trying that, you know, try an attempt in the breakout and creating another wick right there. And then finally, obviously creating that, you know, double, triple top, you know, if you wish, and then getting that pretty decent pullback of, you know, several hundred dollars, even over a thousand dollars, maybe in the next 24 hours. Anyway, let's go right away. Uh, Devolt, do you see anything in the comment section? Anything interesting? Altcoins? I see we do have a super chat. Someone asking for Kava. <clears throat> All right. Kava. Do you know Kava is like champagne in <laughs> Catalonia? <laughs> it's like a, spe <laughs> like a kind of champagne. <laughs> anyway, had to be said. Had to be said. Every time some people ask me for Kava, I always think in that champagne, Catalonian champagne. Uh, right 
Let's okay. go. What, what do we have? So I've got cover open here just to quickly analyze cover from, from a high time frame to a high time frame perspective. I mean, it, it really looks good. Um, you can see I've got some resistance areas identified over here. We are still inside of accumulation zone. And I feel like a, a person that just keeps on repeating myself is that we, Andy and myself and you have seen already coins that have done uh, sorry, that have done this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And like render is already mm -hmm. in price discovery. Injective protocol is already in dis price discovery. Solana and Rune is over here already. Um, mm -hmm. there's, there's some altcoins that have done phenomenal things. So when I look at the altcoins that I have here in red, these are the ones that I am looking at that have not done this as yet. So you have to be patient. These are patient trades where you want to build your position yeah okay you don't want to see that and then oh crap i forgot to add this to my spot back and then you start buying and you get a correction back to the downside retesting this accumulation zone bleeding out your account fomoing out of your trade taking the knock on the chin only for it to then continue you know th that's how people lose money they fomo in and they move, they buy the tops. You mm. get a correction. They sell because they can't take the knock on the chin. And then when price goes back up again, they start buying again. Mm. No, you have to be clever about yeah. the trades. And I always tell my community as well um, that I mean, this is the area when you when you have done your research, you believe in yeah. the fundamentals. You think mm -hmm. that this coin is one of those coins that it's at least going to come and claim the all time highs from a fundamental perspective. Yeah, this is where you build your position. This is where you do it. No way else. Yeah. You don't do it. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, do it. yeah. You, sure. you, you, you're too late for the party. Okay. Um, you know, I, I, I mean, this. I got. A, there's a great accumulation zone on Chainlink. Uh, you know, between five dollars and yes. seven, eight dollars. Yes. Uh, it was very, very clear. I was buying like crazy uh, Chainlink because I'm a strong believer on Chainlink in, in the future. In the near future, but um, also Metis is one of them. It's an L2 solution for for um, Ethereum, and I, this one did about about almost a six x approximately, you know, in the last few months, and it was forming this same you know kind of structure on Carver as well. Um, and I know Carver is an OG, quite an OG project. It's been live for over four years, if I'm not mistaken. You know, it's a pretty yes. OG project, and um, I think it's a pretty solid project. Uh, uh, you know, no doubt. I feel I feel bad for the people that are going to enter the market. New, fresh, fresh men, right? New, fresh people fresh that meat. are <laughs> fresh, fresh meat, meat. <laughs> that are going to be joining the market in in the next coming months when everything is pumping like crazy. Because um, uh, yeah, a lot of people will be buying, uh, fomoing in, just like it happens every single time. Luckily, I started crypto default in 2018 in the middle, you know, stages to around about May, June, when everything was actually collapsing. And, you know, my first Bitcoin was accumulated at $6,000 range, six $7,000 area. And I was already buying to the downside, understanding the cycles. But, you know, mm. whoever, whoever entered in 2017, right, at the almost end stages, uh, and also the ones that entered in 2021, um, you know, they, they're just buying at the wrong moment. And this will happen again in the next, you know, six to 18 months. We're going to see a big FOMO moment. And um, I think a lot of new new people will be joining in buying late, basically. And uh, But it is why it is. I, we could not do anything about it, right? But no doubt that Carver looks insane. I feel like buying some Carver myself, not... You know, just by looking at the chart, I have really no no I no idea about the fundamentals and the roadmap and what are they achieving for for the next you know couple of years. But just the chart looks very very nice, to be honest. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. Andy, just to hammer on that point that you've just mentioned, and I want to look the people in the eyes when I say this. <clears throat> Everyone. Andy's community, my community, I believe, and this is my research and where I've been in the market cycles, if you are watching this stream, you are still early, okay? Mm -hmm. Some of the altcoins that we are identifying here, obviously with good risk management, doing your own research, no financial advice, my personal opinion, if you watching this live stream today and you are building up spot bags for your favorite altcoins like Carver, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Okay. That have not done phenomenal things. I personally have done my research on Carver. That is why it is inside my red list over here of uh, altcoins that I'm currently accumulating. That's mm -hmm. just my research that I've done. Atom, um, eGold, Dot. Mm -hmm. These are some of the ones that I feel can still do phenomenal things. You are still early because, like mm -hmm. Andy has also mentioned, when this coin does this the fresh sardines that's going to come in over in this area when you start hitting all-time high areas we are going you know when, when your mom and your friend that you haven't spoken to in 10 years starts phoning you and saying hey what altcoin must i buy i see everything is ripping you're going to be that person that says oh i'm already taking profits yeah okay that's where you want to be <laughs> that's where you want to yeah be. yeah for sure i mean i've already taken some profits to be honest on some old coins but just because they have pumped quite a lot such as metis right um that did a 5x and i i did put yes. a significant amount and i took i, I sold 50 percent because to be honest as well that there will be a lot of old coins that are either not going to hit all-time highs yes but also they're going to, you know, some of them are going to go reach halfway, <clears throat> halfway, right? Hit the 50% Fibonacci or 618 and then start getting the pullback. Some altcoins did that on the previous cycle. Some of the OJ, yes. OG projects and a like lot XRP. of them. Yeah. And the <laughs> like XRP, for example, yes. <laughs> and a lot of them, uh, I feel bad because XRP has a huge army. You know, there's really strong believers. I'm not too sure. I mean, I, maybe at some point XRP will, will be um will have a massive run i don't yes. know not 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 too sure about you know never xrp is not one of my holdings anyway um so the thing is a lot of them d double topped as well a yes. lot of the altcoins on the previous cycle double topped from the dot from the 2017 high and this only tells you that when an altcoin hits all-time high everybody's in profit, right? And you yes. need to understand that when everybody is in profit, you're going to start seeing a lot of people taking profit. And you do not want to be the last guy holding the bag. The bag. Yes. <laughs> and taking the last dollar, right? Be the be smart, be the first one. If it does go to a little bit higher levels, then don't sell everything, right? But take profit, take 20% out, right? Take you know, 30 if you want to go a bit more aggressive or 40. Uh, but you need, at old time high, it's like you need to take profit. You need to take profit. Um, that is for sure. And, you know, that's what happened on, on me on the previous cycle. I did take about 25% of profits on all of my crypto except for Chainlink. I wish I would have taken much more, right? 50, 60, 70. Um, but... It won't happen this time. This time I'm going to be more aggressive taking profits. I don't care about a 20, 30 or 25x. You know, if I'm doing a 10x or a 15x, bring it on. I am banking on that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. So. And I think, Andy, that's that's why I've also got mm. high time frame analysis with resistance boxes yep. on top. I have these resistances not to see where price can turn around. I have these resistances as profit-taking yeah. areas. Okay, you know, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. And then when we do go and hit the all-time highs over here, maybe I'll leave 10% of the position open. But I mm -hmm. have already made insane gains here to the upside. Okay, 6x, you know, when we get to all-time highs, 8x, 9x maybe, mm -hmm. you know. Um, definitely, I'm also not making that mistake again, Andy. Definitely, yeah, definitely yeah. not. I think you've taken profits on Phantom, which is, I mean, beautiful profit-taking area by the 1.618, 2.618, 3. As yeah. you move up, you start, you know, if you have a big yeah. spot that, that you've built up, take some off the table. Really, you must yeah. take some off the table. For sure. Yeah, yeah, no no doubt. I mean, the, 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 the good thing about the bull market, you can do some quick flips as well, right? You, you yeah. know, if you do enter late... I mean, there is this accumulation zone for the for the long for the mid long term, right? For the next six, eighteen months or something. But I, I like to do these quick flips if we can analyze that third wave, right? Or a, a, an expansion extension wave, um, yeah. and and take advantage to do a, a maybe a fifty percent profit or or a two x. You know, I, I, I do try and then with Phantom, it did play out very very well, uh, no no doubt. Where, where it did manage to do a a two x. 
in, in a matter of a couple of weeks, it was, which was, you know, played out very, very nicely. And Dion, and I think I'm, I'm with Doge yeah, as well, yeah. Oh, Dogecoin. Oh, you absolutely nailed the meme coins uh, on Pepe, on Doge, on Shiba, you know, looking for that third massive wave in between February and March, which was, yeah, just, uh, it was kind of a, a pretty obvious move that was going to happen. Uh, I got a super chat here from Singularity X uh, saying that, Andy, are you going to token 2049? And yes, I am. Uh, I know you are coming soon to Dubai, Devolt. Yes, um, during May, yeah. But uh, yeah, the token 49, 2049 is in about two weeks, I think. It is mid-April, but uh, yeah. it's a pretty nice, you know, it's a blockchain event. Um, it's, uh, you know, no doubt I'm going to go there for sure. It's a really nice event. You should get a flight and come over, Devolt, to, <laughs> to this event. Um, so yeah, the answer for that is yes. We got Zilliqa here. Zilliqa, Zilliqa. There's a few Zilliqas here in the comment section. What I've do you think about Zilliqa? Zilliqa? In my, I've got Zilliqa in my red list. And I, you know, I've told, I've told, I've told people, I've <laughs> told people that if you have no idea about altcoins, you're still looking for ones that potentially can still, you know, take a screenshot of this. Go do research of the ones that I've got highlighted here in red and green. I encourage mm -hmm. you to do your own research. Go look at the websites, read the white papers if you feel comfortable in it, you know, mm -hmm. um, and you need to make that buying decision, you know, go nibble a little bit. The ones that I have here are the ones that I've done my research and I feel that they haven't done what some of the other altcoins have done. For example, Andy, I've got a big bag of render, but it's not in that list. Why is it not in that list? Well, this is the reason why. I cannot mm -hmm. show the community a coin that has already done what I'm expecting the other ones to do. Look at that. We are in price discovery at the moment. Yeah. Okay. So the ones that I've identified here are the ones that when you zoom out, you know, you're still looking for, for that little cup and handle potentially. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I just wanted to throw that in there. So, yeah. Zilliqa, Zilliqa, Zilliqa. Let's go through Zilliqa quick. I do hold a bag of Zilliqa as well. My um, <clears throat> entry price is at 2.1 cent. It's so, it's a coin that we've, you know, I have been talking about uh, for many, many weeks, you know, before we actually, you know, got the breakout um, just a few weeks ago uh, at the two, two, 2.1, 2.2 cent level. It was consolidating there for a long, long time in between, you know, December, you know, January. And mm. finally started getting the move up above four cents doing that 2x. But uh, it's just, a, oh, I did get a lot of people very impatient with this. And I was, every time I got people, hey, Zilliqa, 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 it's not pumping, it's not pumping. And I said, this will pump at some point in the next coming weeks. It's going to pump. And, you know, we, we basically formed finally that that third wave, um, you know, in, in, you know, from January, February, getting that nice momentum to the upside. What I also like about Zilliqa, um, Andy, and I've also been trading it for very long over the years. Like the first thing I have to admit, uh, Zilliqa and Theta, from a trend line perspective, they love fake outs. So they're not easy to day trade. I just want to make that clear. Well, specifically not for me. Because you get mm -hmm. a lot of fake outs to the upside and downside, but you can see when they rip. Oh my word! They just, you know, look at this candle. Look at this two-day candle up up here. Absolutely yeah. insane. Where in a in a matter of two three days, you had a pump of four x. Okay, absolutely mm. insane. <laughs> but Andy, I, I I remember you saying as well. You know, when we tell our communities buy this one or I'm buying this one, no financial yeah. advice, I'm buying this one, yeah. you know, this this accumulation zone can still go on for a little while. It can go on and yeah. go on and go on. And then one day you see a God candle to the upside, like what happened over here. And you're mm. like, thank heavens I was patient. I sat in my hands. I didn't mm. sell it and then start FOMO buying into it when it starts pumping and then potentially yeah. price turns against you. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, no, no, no doubt that the, the bull run is 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 fast. It is fast, and people rush to deposit 
their, their money into crypto exchanges. They are late. They feel they're late. They FOMO in. This is very real. Yeah. This is something that happens. And this is why these pumps, you know, go to exponential levels because FOMO and, and super hype and greed is what makes that guard candle, right? In a matter of a few days, uh, a few weeks, right? Because it's like FOMO stage. People do not yes. want to miss out. And all of the massive fresh liquidity comes into the market. And you want to get the heck out when that happens. You don't want to <laughs> jump in because there's clear, clear sign that the peak is is, is very, very close. Um, you know, the, net, the, thing, the thing about these pumps, you, you never know where the high is, right? You never know how, how FOMO can kick in, but you always want to get out. Always want to get out slowly and consistently, right? Bang, bang, 10%, 20%. You pump more, get another 20% out, bang, 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 you know, scale out. Definitely. Mm. And I think, you know, Andy, just analyzing it very quickly here, I think there's one of two scenarios that can play out here is so from an Elliott wave perspective, it's a beautiful one, two, and we have now, you know, common third wave target, 1.618. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then purely, you know, if I take a time fib and I measure this impulse mm -hmm. to the correction, um, yeah, it looks like it likes this 0 0.618 for a turnaround, okay, mm -hmm. from a correction perspective. So if I now say, well, perhaps the market doesn't repeat, but it rhymes from the start of the impulse to where we are right now, close to the 0 0.618, which mm. tells me that this correction applies to this wave, okay? We're yeah. not just correcting a small little wave here to the um, on the way up which then tells me, and I'm getting to a point over here, is yeah, that yeah. this could be one of two scenarios where we have a one, two, yeah. three, and this is a fourth Four. wave, and yeah. you're still expecting that liquidity grab mm. above the mm -hmm. three, okay? And it can go yeah. a little bit higher because I do see that for altcoins, when FOMO kicks in, retail pushes the price up even higher. So you mm. could have that 2.618 tap and then mm -hmm. a larger ABC to the downside, maybe back to this momentum, or you have a running flat where you fail to break um, this wave over here. We'll, we, we'll mm. just have to see. Um, but without keeping it too technical, it looks yeah. like it's going to still get that fifth wave here to the upside. Okay. For sure. And yeah. then one more leg up. A, a ABC correction here to the downside. Yeah. One more leg yeah. up here. Okay, it, you know, usually you don't know where the third wave is going to end, but because this correction is so long in time already, I can almost tell you that it looks like the third wave is done. Mm -hmm. We're expecting a fifth wave and then a larger correction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One more push to the upside, looks like it, yeah. But Especially it's still if... bullish. And, and you know, Andy, when I oh, tell yeah. people that this is still bullish, like this is bullish mm. and we're going to, let's say we have a larger correction like this coming to bounce here on oh. this trend. People are like, oh, my word. But what they don't realize is this then becomes a one, two, three. This third wave is going to be absolutely face melting to the upside once you've yeah. completed this first wave of a bigger impulse to the upside. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, this is, yeah, this is, I've also been seeing this as well, Devolt, as in, you know, this is like the first wave of the bull run, right? If we are expecting bull run, to to happen in you know beginning of 2025 you know mid 2025 like the exponential waves to the upside we're still in early 2024 right you know this is like the early stages we're going to see yes. sideways momentum we're going to see corrective moves we're going to see people in doubt we're going to see a washout right we're going to see people you know bringing a bunch of fud which is just going to be a nice fresh retest uh, fresh um you know yeah reset sorry yes before yeah before the real real bull run kicks in which is obviously that third wave they could be kicking in after the after the summer right we might be entering a two three month you know boring sideways momentum corrective move even though if bitcoin does hit all-time high you know it might hit all-time high and then start a pretty deep corrective move for two three months till the end of yeah. the summer and then, you know, once September, October kicks in again, you know, this is where we're going to start seeing, you know, the momentum kick in again. You're going to start seeing the Bitcoin halving, you know, having that supply shock effect. You're going to start seeing big institutions and investors coming back from their summer holidays, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, but, and that is when they're going to start coming in again into the market. You know, just, uh, just market moves in cycles, summer 
I wouldn't expect much in the summer. And, you know, just, uh, I mean, if we do see the summer from the cycle bull runs, you know, the bull runs on the previous cycles, you know, the summers have been quite punchy. You know, they have been quite, yes. you know, they have had some momentum to the upside. So we don't know how the summer is going to, going to react uh, because they might be FOMO on the summer. And, you know, a lot of people saying, you know, screw the summer holidays. Bitcoin is supply is, <laughs> you know, shrinking. Bitcoin's more no important. <laughs> Bitcoin, we will we'll go for summer holidays in, you know, 2025. You know, let's uh, take advantage of this bull run. <laughs> but so, also, right, Andy, yeah. I'm not sure if you remember from the previous bull cycles, is that the true alt season where you see that face melting price action is usually mm. when Bitcoin is close to its top for that bull cycle. It's yeah. not going to be now. It's, you know, let's say mm. for argument on, uh, for argument's sake that Bitcoin is going to make its ultimate high for the next bull cycle during November of next year. Mm -hmm. It's during the November, December, where you're going to see that massive, massive altcoin yeah. explosion. And then when mm -hmm. Bitcoin starts correcting, you see that dump from the altcoins as well. It's usually the last couple of months when Bitcoin yeah. is at the at the top. It's starting to get weakness. It's starting mm -hmm. to turn around. Yeah, that's just yeah, what I've I mean, noticed from the pre previous bull yeah, cycles. Yeah. The real moves happen in just a few weeks, like the 10, 20, yeah. 30 Xs. They, they happen in, in just a few weeks. It is quick. And uh, you have many, uh, you have a long, long time to accumulate, but you have a very, very small period to get out of the market when it just goes like a hockey stick, right? Just like this chart right yes. here with big time, yes. you know, you basically can see November, December, right? And it's, you've got a hockey stick, basically, you've got the flat part where you have a lot of time to accumulate. And then suddenly you have a, a, just a few days of the price just ripping. And that's where, you, you know, you want to get the heck out as soon as you get stuck getting that <laughs> momentum to the upside. Because then it's going to get boring again. It's going to go down. And it's just you have a lot of time right now to accumulate. But when you make the money is accumulating on these, um, you know, better boring, you know, downtrend momentum. Because, you know, once it goes up, you want to start getting the heck out very, very quick. I've got a quick um, question here. You've got big time here on the chart. Yes. Uh, somebody was asking about Litecoin. You know, uh, I think he's a new subscriber. Choo Choo TV was saying, can you ask Devolt about, you know, what's his opinion on Litecoin? But anyway, Singularity X, we have, uh, can you guys look at big time? Gaming runs hard. Yeah, I'm, I'm very bullish on, ga uh, on, on gaming and also on big time. You know, I know the creators of big time as well. It's a very interesting project. And, um, no doubt there's going to be insane marketing behind this project, in my opinion, based on, you know, the owners, creators, you know, are big, big, big um, social media, you know, influencers as well. And, um, you know, they, 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 they're likely going to, you know, get this. And it is a good project, not only because they're the, they, you know, they're creators, but it is a good project. And no doubt I do see this one doing very very well especially they're going to take advantage of the bull run and they're going to know how to market you know big time for sure um, definitely and i'm um, just quick analysis here on big time is that i think we just need to hold the support and this at the moment looks like the accumulation zone over here where mm. you dip in you, you're not you're not breaking down you dip in you go up you dip in you go up i mean ultimately yeah if you if you wait for the break of this trend you're going to catch your entry a little bit late um, mm. But for now, it looks yeah. like this zone is holding. And this is Based. where potentially yeah. you want to start accumulating in this zone. We're mm. holding this range over here. Okay. Yeah. We had the breakout. We've now retested it as support three times already. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you can build your position here, and by yeah. the time you get to this line, you are already in profits. Okay. That's yeah. just how yeah. I would play this. Yeah. And even though, to be honest, even though, it, you know, it's no doubt a good zone because you are touching base right there. You are touching a pretty solid floor level um, from price action of January and February. But if you break down from this level, you know, I would go not all in, but I would, you know, really <laughs> buy a lot of it because... I mean, look at what happened here. It looks mm -hmm. like you're losing the level. When you start seeing that candle, and I agree, when you start seeing that candle, you're like, oh, it's it's over. It's over. It's going down. And then it has that recovery back to the upside, mm. <laughs> like what yeah. happened there. So yeah, yeah. definitely, I think, you know, if we can get that, beautiful. Mm, then yeah. you, you start dipping into this um, consolidation area over here. 
Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a classic descending triangle breakdown. I see this on yeah. many, many altcoins. And the breakdown gives you the best buying opportunity, right? Because a lot of yes. people, when they analyze a descending triangle, oh, we broke the support. You know, we, we, we're going to continue this big, massive downtrend. I just want to share the chart to take a look at Bitcoin, which, which basically formed that massive descending triangle back in the day of 2018 right where you have that you know huge gigantic kind of descending triangle formation right over here with lower highs right and 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 you got that base really nice base at the six thousand dollar range and this is actually where i started buying bitcoin you know i well remember of my entire life <laughs> in 2018 <laughs> so um yeah basically you know descending triangle formation you get the breakdown oh my goodness i remember this stage here where you had uh, tone vase and a lot of uh, major influencers from back in the day calling for thousand dollar bitcoin uh, you know, no, no doubt this was the massive accumulation point for for bitcoin uh, at, the, at the low three thousand dollar area and when you do take a look at big time you know I wouldn't say we're forming something the same, but, you know, just to consider that we are forming like a descending triangle. We're touching base. No mm. doubt it is okay to accumulate because no doubt after a few months, you know, you will be in profits at some point. It is a good project. It does have, you know, very good projection roadmap. So, you know, it will likely, highly likely recover. Of course, no financial advice, guys. You know, you know, there's nothing safe in this world, not only crypto. But, um, you know, it does have very good projections. And if you do get that breakdown from that descending triangle, right, just going to big time right there, um, just to take, take a look at the charts right away on the higher time frames, um, you know, it, it, it will just bring the, 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 the obvious, pretty obvious good opportunity to, 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 to step in right there. If you do break down from this descending triangle in the next coming weeks, um, you know, would be looking for a bottom formation and then a major rally. Uh, yeah. Just very, very similar to what happened to, to Bitcoin right over here. Because, I mean, all coins will pop very strongly at some point in between 24, 25, right? More more entering into 25, in my opinion. But, but yeah, that's um, no doubt. And big time, it's a good project. It's, uh, it's a good project. The projection roadmap, everything looks really good for rest of 24 and 25. So no, no, it's it's at a good accumulation stages, no doubt. And if it does get that dip, you know, I would consider getting some. I haven't got any big time, you know, to disclaimer right there. I, you can't own everything, right? There's so many altcoins that I would want to buy to do yes. well, but you just cannot can't. buy everything. No, you just can't. I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe if you have a hundred million dollar portfolio, you can go and buy a thousand altcoins, but yeah. <laughs> you have to start exactly. prioritizing and filter out the process. So definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. 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 And you can, I one a of lot them, of, uh, sorry, Andy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I've got someone saying SOAR, which is X O R, SOAR network. This is one that, you know, went into hyperinflation. It's one of the, one of the, my risky altcoins that I, um, I basically, it, it just went, you know, they went into a hyperinflation and um, got wrecked basically on this one. You know, I basically lost 99% of my my funds on, on that one. Um, Sounds like Luna. Yeah, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it went to a hyperinflation stage. And however, you know, it was, you know, not even 2% of my portfolio. So it's uh, you, you take a hit on some of them and on, on other ones such as Metis, Phantom, you do really nice quick flips and you <clears throat> regain more than you've lost, obviously. So um, anyway, yeah, Sora is one of them. They, I, you know, I basically lost 99% and I do see very, very hard for it to recover, right? It's one of those <laughs> projects that, yeah, anyway, I know it's, um, a lot of people, Luna was going to be like the next big thing. And I know a lot of people, especially influencers, you know, I'm not going to say any names here, yes. that actually were betting very, very hard and lost a lot, a lot of money on the collapse of Terra Luna. Um, you know, it is what it is, you know, at the end of the day. I also lost a lot of money yeah. during the Luna because I think I was so influenced by everyone hyping up this project. I had the Terra yeah. Luna staking protocol on my phone. Yeah. And yeah, when that thing, and I mean, the, the problem with that token was that you have like a 30, 31 day unlock period. 
So I, yeah. I had them all staked and locked. And when I saw the dump, I couldn't sell. I was just locked in. I couldn't. I just saw it yeah. crash and there's nothing that I could do about it. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. These events. Luna, I remember Luna. Remember uh, FTX collapse. Yes, I remember yes. C19 collapse in 2020. These events are just so entertaining, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> For me, they are very entertaining because, uh, you know, they're... they're, they're I don't get scared or any, you know, the first, well, back in the day, you know, the, the C-19 crash was pretty, pretty uh, disturbing to, 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 um, to live, right. For everybody, right. All of this lockdown thing and everything, you know, worldwide was actually pretty shocking, but uh, still I knew it was a great, great investment opportunity uh, for sure. Yeah. So you buy up the fear, you buy the fear. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of people are asking for Litecoin. And yes, let's go right away. I mean, I, I can take a look at like, well, I think somebody wanted your opinion on Litecoin because I did analysis on Litecoin. He, I think he did at Choo Choo TV. You know, he did ask me on the previous live stream. And my opinion is that we Litecoin is, is potentially going to break that high from July of 2023 to form a very large third wave to the upside. Now, of course, you know, yeah. you do take a look at Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash oh, has just gone doing amazing. It's on its gone way through to the like roof. A rocket. Yes, it's gone through the roof. And I knew this was going to happen because Bitcoin Cash lags behind Bitcoin by a lot. Not only a few days. It and it's happened on on previous cycles and previous movements to the upside. It takes months before Bitcoin. You know, uh, it, it takes months basically after Bitcoin pumping so aggressively. That Bitcoin yeah. cash suddenly starts rocketing. And I remember, you know, several, several weeks ago saying, you know, Bitcoin cash is just going to get a massive move at some point. So uh, obviously not looking at to trade, to leverage trade, but, you know, for, for, for buying on spot, you know, I was saying, hey, this is pretty good buy on Bitcoin cash. And you know, no doubt all these paying platforms, they have Bitcoin, they have Ethereum, they have Tether, but they also have, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. They have these OG projects yes. that have been proven to be safe on the <clears> network that, um, that they, they will run. You know, and you can see Litecoin and Litecoin is, I'm saying, you know, hey, this is, this is going to run at some point. It's going to run strong. At it some looks, point. and yeah. it looks like it wants to, it, you know, it looks like it's building up that yeah. spring for an yeah. explosion. Yeah. And I think for yeah. me to turn really bullish on Litecoin is I would like to see us hold above this 0.618 level basically mm -hmm. holding above these highs over here so i would like for us to break out and hold above and i do see then a target of 178 dollars potentially yeah. if it's if yeah. it can manage to hold this uptrend here yeah. i do see this as definitely definitely a profit taking area and i mean yeah. the third waves can be very explosive i just want to make yeah. people aware i usually take this as a nice tp1 like you've done on phantom as well andy and me yeah. on dogecoin yeah. because yeah. third waves can be very explosive you just never know how high they can go so mm. the 1.618 level is considered a common third wave target, okay, yeah. where I will definitely take some off the table. And depending, mm. you know, I mean, if we had to come and just do that and find support above it, it means, you know, we're just going to go, go and climb the stairs up there. But um, 178, maybe if we're lucky. 252 but you just never know how explosive they can get mm. um, but it does look like it's building up a one two and this is potentially that third wave here to the upside definitely looks pretty interesting i think litecoin goes um it lags behind such as bitcoin cash but you know bitcoin cash yeah. is just um i think it's trading around about 700 dollars, and we're only trading at 300 dollars a few weeks ago um so it's done over a two x, done well over a two x in in just a matter of a, of a couple of weeks, if I'm not mistaken. So um, yeah, Litecoin is another OG one. It's uh, you know they, they, you would want to say that it's the silver of of you know the digital silver. As this is what they said, you know, back in the day, many years ago. You know, gold, uh, Bitcoin is the digital gold. Litecoin is the digital silver, right? Just a, a yes. silly fact. <laughs> that they used to say back in the day. Um, Devault, I think, 
we are good. We've been an hour and 30 minutes on the live stream. You know, it's been absolutely amazing. Legends, make sure to follow Dewalt. I've got the link here in the comment section right away. It's in the pinned comment. He has his own YouTube channel. He does post every single day his analysis on Bitcoin and some other markets also and on some other altcoins. So check him out, guys. Share some love. Smash up the like button. Dewalt, thank you very much for joining the stream. Is there any last thing that you would like, want to say to the community? But also from my community, Andy, thanks for having me. I also have um, Andy's link down in my description of my video. For those of you you know, that's on my community, you haven't seen Andy, you've seen us talk together, go check out Andy's video. Um, great alpha that Andy delivers. Daily analysis, YouTube updates, and as always, come and join our Legends community. 25% discount where you get the alpha first before we actually upload our videos. And mm -hmm. that's basically it from my side. I a chilled Sunday afternoon stream. Yeah. I had fun. I hope everyone had fun. Smash the like yeah. on your way out. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. Thanks, Devolt. Speak soon. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.